First off, I want to thank the uh, brave men and women who work behind the wall. I want to thank them on a national level because their job goes on How do they try to turn a guard? Well, President, uh, correctional officer, sorry, I apologize. Uh, but correctional officer. How you guys doing today? It's Anthony Ganji, host of Tear Talk. I want to discuss writing up inmates. Basically, giving inmates a charge, giving inmates a discipline. Now, we touched on this topic before. I still want to touch on it once again because as I go through social media pages, you know, the, the groups that we're connected to, like Correctional Officer Brotherhood, great group, by the way, if you haven't, please join that. Uh, Keepers of Chaos, you know, Thin Gray Line, a lot of good groups out there. A lot of officers or even civilian staff get frustrated when they feel that their charges aren't being supported by management. And in most cases, they're quick to blame management and make management look like, oh, they're just too lovey-dovey with the inmates. And maybe that's the case. I don't know. I can't speak for that on an individual basis. But what I could try to do is give some tips to help make sure that those charges stick. I will provide some tips and obviously those that comment will also add their tips so obviously I'll, I'll put in a little bit to start the dialogue and then we can read through the comments and really just get a well-rounded idea of what's needed if we want to make sure that these charges stick so and I'm doing this because sometimes I feel it's not always administration or management throwing away charges sometimes I feel that people haven't done enough effort to write the charge so it could go either way but again without throwing stones these are some tips and at least if you do have management that's throwing these charges out, well, these are some tips that will make it harder to do that. So, guys, if you happen to show Tear Talks for you, please subscribe, interact, engage, comment, hit that bell. That bell's going to notify you every time I post a video. And when we come back from our sponsor, we're going to be discussing inmate discipline, tips to writing charges that hopefully stick. I wanted to attend a university that had an intelligence program. I wanted to look at problems different. I wanted to increase my critical thinking abilities. AMU offered those avenues to expand. Obtaining your degree as an adult, you're actually paying yourself and investing in yourself. You can't put a dollar on it, it's priceless. It's something that can never be taken away from you. American Military University, learn from the leader. Thank you guys for listening to our sponsor. Guys, this is one of the most important parts of your job, writing charges, writing disciplinaries. It's very, very important that you make the time and effort to do so. And if you're a supervisor, give your officers a private spot where they can focus 100% on what needs to be written. Make sure that they have the time to do it. Don't rush them because this is not meant to be rushed. Officers need to take their time. They need to have 100% attention on what they're doing so they really need to be in a private area so they can focus on the charge and focus on what need to, needs to be written now right off the bat simple advice right here I'm sure you've heard it before writing a charge cannot be personal don't make it personal and I've been guilty of that so I know how it feels don't chase after charges for personal reasons I've learned as time goes by that if I am chasing after a charge, it's not for personal reasons. It's more of an education. Like, what did I do wrong? How could I correct it? Why was it dropped? And again, if it was dropped, it sucks. I'm upset about it, but it's not personal. Just tell me what I could do to make my charges better. Because again, you don't want to spend your whole career chasing charges because you're going to win some, you're going to lose some. It's just not worth the added frustration. You're going to stress out. The other thing is, guys is you have to be clear and concise and to the point. It's not about the why. Don't put whys in reports. You know, let the investigative authorities, let, let them all figure that out. You're there just to state the facts, the who, the what, the when, the where, maybe even the how. But never, never the why. Also, when you write reports and when you write those charges, Make sure you take note of the rule that you said was violated or broken because it may not just be people from the inside reading it that automatically have an idea of what you're talking about. These charges can go up multiple levels, way past the agency and onto higher level court systems. So you have to spell it out and you may have to quote or you should quote the rule that is being broken or that was broken. So you state what the incident is, again, only the facts. And then, by the way, this is a violation of blah, 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 whatever the state code is or whatever it is, and then the number um, that is associated with that violation. 
And that makes it a lot harder to throw out because you're putting the policy and then you're explaining how that policy or how that procedure was broken or violated, how that rule, that law, whatever the case is, that was violated. And that works. Guys, I'm telling you something that works. If anything, it makes it harder for the inmate to defend themselves because you're putting it out there. There's, there's no loophole there. You're putting it out there. And it makes it harder for someone on a higher level to throw it out. Now, guys, we want to make it easy for the disciplinary hearing officer or the committee or whatever their title will be, the person that hears the charges or the people that hear the charges, to confirm the yes, to validate our hard work in writing the charge. We want them to be able to be confident with their answers. We want that. But if we're sloppy with charges, if we don't care, we don't put the effort in it, we get the inmate's name wrong, the number wrong, or it's badly written, words don't make sense, they're misspelled. I mean, that's a whole mess of stuff that the inmate's going to maneuver around. Trust and believe. Those become loopholes. Also, think about your credibility. You're a professional. Whether you're a sworn law enforcement, like some states, which all states should be, with corrections, or... You're an officer, a correctional officer without that law enforcement title. You're still put in a position of authority and you are given that level of credibility. But then you write a report. You don't care about it. You misspell words. It looks sloppy. It's hard for other people to understand. It just messes with your credibility and it puts too much effort and hard work on the, on the person hearing the charge. At one point they were like, dude, I'm not, I'm not doing this. Like, I, I, it's too much. You know, make the road easy for them so they can make the yes easy. Support the charge. You know, take your time, write it, do what's correct, and make sure, again, whatever you do, that you're not making it easy for anybody to throw out or challenge. Again, this is a, per a perception of you. Those charges are a reflection of you. That, that's, a lot of people don't realize that. Those charges are a reflection of you. A lot of times when people see that the charges have been thrown out, they're quick to blame everyone else. I mean, I was that way. But then someone educated me and they said, Gange, look at what you did. Look where the loophole was. Now remember, Gange, someone can always appeal my decision. So if I make a decision that the person is guilty, the inmate's allowed to take it above and beyond. Because you never know. Any charge can wind up in, the, in, in, in a higher level court system. So at that point, is this person who's supposed to be objective really doing their job when someone from the outside sees such an obvious error? So again, someone's always checking someone else's work. So, so the thing is, Gange, you have to cross your T's for me. You have to dot your I's. Because someone's expecting me to do the same thing. When I make my decision, I have to cross my T's and dot my I's. So these are the ways that you can make sure your charges stick. Now, mind you, when I wrote in charge, I wasn't lazy or nothing. It's just I had to implement things I did not know to do. And as simple as it may sound, at the very beginning of my career, I just was not putting down the rule violation. I would put down exactly what the inmate did, cited the charge, yes. But in the body of the report, I should have always put down, by the way, this is a violation of blah, blah, blah. Because some of those charges will make it to the outside. And yeah, they know the inmate did something, but where's that a rule? Where's that written? Where can I research that? So you put it out there. You put it out there to support the charge. And I think that made me a lot better in writing my charges because, again, nine times out of ten when I wrote charges after that, most of them stuck. Not all of them. You're going to win some. You're going to lose some. You know, but again, it's not personal. But for the most part, for the most part, my charges stuck because again I was clear and concise to the point left out the whys time dates just facts just the facts and then cited the violation cited the violation I, and that, again that's I want, I want to emphasize that because that really is important citing the violation um, but other than that this was just quick a quick little blog I just want to make sure that when we're doing this I give you a nice kind of like a starter kit so we're going to see where other people are going to come in and comment and also give their advice. Because again, there's so many perspectives to everything in corrections. There's not one person that knows everything. So we start the dialogue and then other people come in and eventually you get something very well balanced. Plus it gives me a chance to learn. So again, just in short, you know, the concise reports, avoid the whys, you know, cite those, cite those uh, charges that are being violated. Take your time. 
double check your work. Even send it to someone else to proofread, but not to change the integrity of your report. But I may, I may ask somebody, does this read right to you? Does this make sense to you? And again, guys, it's not an effort for them to come and say, hey, you said this, but that's gonna get you in trouble. You should say this. It's more so is I'm not looking to change the integrity of the report. What I'm asking is, guys, does my thought come out? Is what I'm saying understood by the person that is reading it? That's the key. And the reason why I have to say that is I want to make sure we don't get we don't misunderstand what I'm telling people. You can give it to someone to look over to make sure it makes sense, but they're not to change the integrity of what you wrote. Because I don't want people coming up saying that, hey, you got us telling other officers to check our stuff and change stuff. That's not what I'm saying. It stays with the integrity. But the person reading it is just making sure that things make sense. Do I understand what you're saying? And sometimes I know people that proofread it to me that would ask me a question. Hey, when you said this, it made me think, I need to ask you this. Oh, you know what? Let me put that in my report because I didn't think about that. And again, guys, that's not changing the integrity. That's adding to the report. As long as you don't do anything that changes from the official meaning of the report. You can always add because we're not perfect. We're not perfect. But when you add, it has to continue with the flow. It cannot jeopardize the integrity, the original statements that you wrote. It cannot conflict because at that point, that's changing the report, not adding. But again... I would love your thoughts on this. It's a great dialogue. I would love to see more char charges supported. It gets upsetting when people see that the charges are being beaten, but then they look to blame everyone else without looking at themselves first. Now, again, that's my perspective. There could be individuals that are very inmate friendly that look to throw out charges for whatever reasons. I'm not saying that doesn't happen. I'm sure it does. But at least by doing videos like this, it makes it harder for them to do that. But again, when we're looking to chase after a charge, it can't be personal. It has to be I'm looking to learn and make myself better. As always, guys, the show is Tear Talk. If you haven't, please subscribe, interact, engage, comment, hit that bell. That bell is going to notify you every time I post a video. Stay safe.